Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to create tables in SQL Server using SQL Server Management Studio. So we're specifically looking at the C in the CRUD. So if you don't know what CRUD is, most database management systems will have create, read, update and delete operations. So we're specifically looking at how to create tables in SQL Server. So with that said, let's load up SQL Server Management Studio. If you don't have SQL Server Management Studio or SQL Server, you can download it for free. I'll leave a link in the description to another video that I created, which explains how to go about downloading and using the software for free. There's a specific version you can download to use. So let's go ahead and connect to my database my SQL Server instance, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into the test database for now because this uh, this database will do just fine. All right, so let's do a new query. Excellent. Right, so um, just quickly, because I always forget this, just quickly before I get into the video, just wanted to say that um, if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, you'd really be helping me out and I will be eternally grateful. And with that said, let's just crack on. So, in order to create a table in a database, now, what I would say at this point is that no two people tend to do this the same, right? So, you're going to likely see lots of different ways to create tables in SQL Server. And you may find that you find your own little way of doing it, and that's absolutely fine. The way I'm going to show you how to do it is what I believe is the cleanest the cleanest way of doing it, okay? So let's let's crack on. So if you wanna create a table, the first thing you wanna do, obviously, well, not obviously if you're learning, so no, is, is uh, type create. So then you wanna put table, create table, and then you're gonna wa wanna put in the schema and the table name, okay? So in this instance, I'm just gonna put it in DBO, all right? Obviously DBO, as you can see, as you might be able to see here, it's a bit small, sorry, I can't really increase the size of the uh, resolution there, but but basically the default schema is DBO. You can create your own schemas. I'll show you how to do that in another video. And you don't have to, if you're creating tables in the default schema, you don't have to specify DBO. However, I like to specify it for completeness. And likewise, you don't actually have to use these square brackets, however, if you, for example, end up with a table name that has a keyword in it, for example, let's say, say you wanted to call, not that you would, but let's say you wanted to call your table create. You can see how you might have a problem, whereas if you use square brackets, it will allow you to do so. So as a rule of thumb, I like to use square brackets around the schema and around the table. If you choose to do so or not is entirely up to you, but that's what I like to do. So in this instance, I'm gonna create a table called config. And the reason I'm going to create a table called config is because I want to create a table in my test database that will store configuration settings. And I think that will be a nice simple example for yourself. So what we want to do now is we want open and closed round brackets, okay? So what I'll do is I'm going to put a few spaces in there so we've got some room to work. Now next thing you're going to want to do is you want to decide what columns you want. Again, I'm going to specify my columns with square brackets just in case we happen to use a reserved word. A lot of people out there say, you know, don't use a reserved word for column names and table names. You know, I'm not going to get into naming conventions because it is a real minefield. All I would say is that that's what the square brackets are for. They're so that if you want to use a reserved word, you can use a reserved word. So the first thing I'd recommend everyone does when they create a table is create a primary key. Again, it's a bit of a can of worms. Some people don't think you always need uh, primary keys. I'm one of those that believe every table should have a primary unique key. It just makes life easier going forward. So let's do that. So ID, I like to call my primary keys ID and it's gonna be an integer. And then we're gonna put identity, okay? Open and closed round brackets and we're gonna put one dash one. Let me explain what that means. So it means that the ID will start at one. Okay, so the first ID we will have will be one, and then it will increment with 
one. So i.e. one, two, three, four, five, six, that kind of thing. Obviously, if we put two, it would increment in two. So it'd be, you know, one, three, five, you, know, you get the idea, right? It wouldn't make no sense to do that though. So let's just do one and one, okay? Um, and with that said, all we need to do now at the end is put primary key and a comma at the end. Right, so that has defined a column called ID. It's an integer, which is obviously just a, a number, a whole number, and we've given it identity of one. So it's gonna start at one and it's gonna increment in one or with one, and it's a primary key. So it's a specific type of a constraint, a table constraint. So it's gonna be unique and it's gonna be an in and it's gonna start at one and go up in one, okay? I'd recommend that that, I'd recommend for example that this is in every table you create. Now I'm gonna create a table with essentially three, three columns. The first one being an ID, the second one being a key. So let's write key. Now as you can see, key happens to be a reserved word, which is exactly why I like to use the square brackets, okay? So there we go, square brackets, space, and I'm going to make this a var char, okay? Var char. And I'm going to specify a size for my key, 64. Now you can go ahead and specify max, which, which effectively means you're not specifying a size, it's whatever SQL Server will allow. And again, this is a, a bit, a bit um, contentious as well. Some people like to specify sizes, some people like to just put max. What I would say though, is that if you specify max, then you can run into problems with performance. So if you can, it's always specify, it's always best sorry, to specify a size. But I would always, what I like to do, I like to imagine what size the column needs to be. And then I like to basically times it by three. So it's, it's larger than it ever needs to be. So I'm not likely to run into issues with trying to insert data that's too long for the column. But likewise, you know, it's a sensible size though, so that when I'm doing queries, performance in SQL Server will be pretty good. So as I say, it's up to you what you choose to do. You might be fine specifying Varchar Max. I wouldn't criticize you if you did. But me, I like to specify something that at least seems sensible on the surface. Again, if you want to implement validation personally, if it were me, I'd probably do that on the front end, so the application. Right, so um, the only other thing I'm gonna do actually at this point is I'm gonna say that this key is not null because I don't ever want somebody to insert a key into this table that is null. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So that's part of my business requirements. If you're gonna insert a key value, I want to have a key, you can't just insert anything. So I'm gonna say that it's not null, and I'm gonna put a constraint on this column, and I'm gonna say it needs to be unique. So in other words, if someone inserts a key called, I don't know, um, title, let's say, I don't want there to be two entries with the same key as title. I want title to only exist once, okay? So hope, hopefully that makes sense. Last column, we're gonna call it value, okay? And I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna make it a varchar. Sorry, I can't type today. Open and close brackets, but I'm gonna make this one much larger because, I mean, to be fair, I could make make this max in fairness. However, for, for, for my, like, I could make it a varchar max, okay? But actually, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it 512. And you might ask, you know, why am I choosing 64 and, and 512? To be honest with you, it's just because I'm a bit of a geek. I like to uh, specify sizes um, that are kind of kind of binary numbers. You know, like one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, hundred twenty-eight, two hundred fifty-six, five hundred twelve. You know, one hundred two four. But that is only because I'm a geek. This could like this could easily have just been five hundred. Okay, but for some reason I sleep better at night when they are like this. Okay, and I'm not gonna put any stipulations on this one, so I'm gonna allow this to be null because someone might, for example, wanna enter a key into this table and they might wanna specify the value at a later point in time. And likewise, I'm not gonna put any stipulations about the field being unique because ultimately, this is just free text they can put in whatever they want. 
Okay. And with that said, we're, we're pretty much done with the create table statement. Now I'm going to put in a go after my create table statement. Again, this is why I said at the start of this video, you're going to see lots of different variations of a create table statement because there's so many different ways to do things. Now, technically speaking, you don't need a go statement. But again, I like to have a go statement because it means that when you execute this, it will send that as a batch to SQL Server. So when you put go, it will essentially say execute that. And then if you had some more statements down below, if you had another go statement, it would say like execute that. I'll show you what that means in a minute actually because I'm going to give you another example. So the only other thing I like to do, and this is a bit because I'm a bit of a stickler, I like to line up the uh, the types there just purely because I actually think it looks a little bit tidier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that. I don't have to highlight it actually because it's the only statement. So, But I'm going to highlight that because it's just false of habit and I'm going to click on the little tick and that's to pass it just to make sure everything's okay. And it says commands completed successfully. At this point, it hasn't actually executed, okay? It hasn't actually executed the statement, it's just passed it to make sure that there's no syntax errors and it's happy. For example, let me see, if I was to put in, actually, I'll show you in a minute because the table doesn't exist yet. So, so let me execute this, this statement, execute. Now the command was executed successfully, so if I go over to tables and refresh, what I'll notice is that here we have it, we have dbo.config. Okay, so I, call, I called my table config. Again, there are lots of naming conventions out there. Some people prefer plural, some people prefer singular. Mm, I kind of flip-flop between the two, but right now, I, I think, I think I prefer uh, singular, but that will change on, on a monthly basis. So what we've got now is we've got our table created, okay? If we want to execute this again, what do you think might happen? Let's have a go we get an error because obviously there is already an object named config in the database, all right? So what I like to do when I create a table and I'm creating the script to create the database, I like to put a drop in now. So a drop table. So what this will do is if the table exists, then it will drop it, okay? But you have to be careful with this because obviously if your table has data in it, you're not gonna wanna drop your, your, uh, your table, are you? Because you're gonna lose all your data. So this is good. Basically, if you're creating the database uh, for a first time or you're creating the table for the first time, because then you can have a bit of a play. Because when I create tables, generally what happens is I'll drop them and create them and change things and change column names quite a few times before I'm happy with the table. So I'll have a little play. So you might want to be careful if this is a, a live database with, with data in it. You're going to want to be, be sure that you don't accidentally run the drop table. Okay, But let me show you how to do it anyway. So drop table, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna write if exists. Now this is a, a much cleaner way. You're gonna see lots of different variations on how to drop a table. This, I believe, is newer syntax and it is a lot cleaner. So of course, what we're gonna put in is DBO. Well, essentially, we're gonna copy that basically. And we're gonna throw that here. So we're basically saying drop the table if it exists and we're asking it to check for this table. And this is where I'll put another go statement. So what we're doing here is we're saying execute that in a batch and then execute that in a batch. Um, I just like to do it like that. You don't have to though. You can literally execute both of these commands in one go. But let me highlight this first. So if I was to, if I was to click on execute, what it'll actually do is it will actually execute everything in one go. But what I want to do is I just want to test that this works. So let's run it it did work. Let's refresh the tables. As we can see, the table has now disappeared. And I can execute this as many times as I want. But obviously it's not delete, deleting the table anymore because that table no longer exists. And we can create it again like this. Now the great thing is, is we can run this script as many times as we want. And what it'll do is it'll drop the table and then create the table. However, what I generally do once I've finished creating my table, so I'll, I'll play around with this for a while, and when I've got to a position where I'm happy with the table, what I'll do is I will either delete this statement, or what I'll do is I'll comment it out. And you can comment it out one of two ways, but the easiest way is just to put two dashes. And as you'll notice, hopefully the color comes through, what you'll notice is that it's gone green. Okay, so you know 
that that's not going to, if I run it again, you know that the drop statement, the drop statement is not going to execute. So if I try and run this multiple times, as you can see down here, it says there is already an object named config. But I can still execute this. Now, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll delete the comment to run it, which is fine. You can do that. But let me show you a little tip. If you leave the drop table statement commented out, what you can do, how about this? You can highlight the command within the comment and run it like that. How cool is that? And then if I run the entire thing again, obviously it's not going to run this anymore, is it? Because we're not highlighting it. It's going to run just that. If I run it again, as you can see, it created it. So I'm happy with this table. We've got ourselves a table in the DBO schema called config. We've got an ID, a key, and a value. The ID is an int, and it's an identity starting at one, and it's going to go up in increments of one, and it's a primary key. Okay, That is a constraint on the table which essentially means it's a clustered index. But we'll get into that in another video. That's a can of worms. We'll get into that in another video. Um, we've got a key and a value. They're both varjar, varchar even. Different sizes, one's 64, one's 500, 512. And the key is not null, and it has to be unique. And the value can be whatever we want it to be. Um, I'm going to leave it like that, but I just wanted to say to you, obviously there are other types in SQL Server. For example, you've got double. Yeah, you've got, um, what else have you got? You've got numeric, you've got a date, you've got a date time, you've got a date time too. So you've got a bunch of different um, data types. So obviously, you know, choose the data type that is appropriate for the data you're going to be storing. This is going to do for me. I hope you found this video useful. It about wraps everything up. If you did find it useful, go ahead and like the video for me. It really helps me out. And likewise, if you want to see similar content to this in the future, why not consider subscribing and supporting the channel? And until next time, take care.